Manchester United against Manchester City on Saturday. The derby is here. And after the pain of Liverpool a couple of weeks ago, the utter, complete and total humiliation of Liverpool, we all thought that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was going to be sacked and replaced as Manchester United manager. He hasn't been. He's been given apparently three games to save his job. The 3-0 against Spurs, very impressive from United. A good response to that Liverpool game. Then we had Atalanta, a game where largely we were outplayed in the same formation we used. We switched formations when Varane came off. Then Ronaldo saved us at the end of that game. So now we head forward to City. Is this literally the last game where Solskjaer can save his job? I, I, I've said it all along. I think United have already made their mind up. I think he's just being given a stay of execution because they need time to plan. But regardless of all of that, I just want to talk about this game against City. I want to take a look at the formation I think Solskjaer is going to use. Take a look at the players I think he's going to use. And have a look at the tactical conversations that we need to have ahead of this game please if you're new to united people's tv consider subscribing consider dropping a like on the video but let's get straight into this one and what i'm going to do i'm, I'm switching up how i usually do these uh, starting 11 videos because i normally sort of look at each area each position but what i'm going to do is look straight at the team and we're going to tactically take a look at it so this is the 11 i think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to start against manchester city as you can see, you've got Harry Maguire in there. Now, Maguire is probably the biggest concern that a lot of United fans have, I would say. Would that be fair? You let me know what you think about that in the comments. But Harry Maguire against Atalanta. Just Harry Maguire in, a, in the last, I don't know, for a long time. He's been so poor. He's been so bang out of form. Now, I think there could be really an argument for dropping Harry Maguire here. Regardless of what's happened, really, but he's not going to because Harry Maguire is his captain. He's stuck to him, but Varane is injured. Varane's out of this game. So Maguire has to play here. And I've got Bai there on the right-hand side, and I've got Victor Lindelof down there on the left-hand side. Victor Lindelof, he didn't make the game against Atalanta because of a slight niggle, but I don't think it's going to be a major issue that rules him out of this game. Bai was absolutely dominant. And I know Cristiano Ronaldo was the man of the match there against um, Atalanta, but Eric Bai was absolutely fantastic as well. And if we're looking at the if we're looking at the overall shape of this team, and we're looking at how important he's going to be to that back three, Eric Bai was phenomenal. Eric Bai put his properly put his body on the line against Atalanta, uh, and, and that's why people and fans that's why he's got so much affection from fans because those sorts of performances he's absolutely capable of. It's just a shame that the injuries have really plighted him. It's a shame he's still got that hot streak in him against City. I would worry about it. I worry about it every game going into Bay. It's part of his repertoire. It's what makes him so good. He's right on the edge. And when, it, when he's on the right side of the edge, he's a fantastic top-level defender. When he's on the wrong side of the edge, he makes rash challenges and he might put United into a bit of a sticky situation. Now, whether or not you play Bay on the right-hand side or the left-hand side, that'll be an interesting debate. I personally think he's going to play Bay on the right. I'd be surprised if I saw Bay on the left. But again... I'm worried about this bloke. Out of all of our defenders, I shouldn't be worrying about our captain. What should I? Your captain is who you should be, you know, you can rely on, you can trust. There's not really much of a worry, but Maguire has been so bang out of form. that I'm worried about him. I really am. I, and I don't know how that's going to go down. So I would say that's probably going to be the back three. Now, Shaw and AWB, or oh, Alan Misaka, if we're going full name, they're going to have to play well against City, man. We know how City play. They were dominant against Bruges, and as they should be, I suppose, during the Champions League this week. But City are a different kettle of fish. As we saw early this season, well, if you watched it anyway, when we watched the City against Liverpool game, it was just a top, top, top level of football. Uh, a different sphere of football that United aren't anywhere near towards. Now, I suppose the big question is, will he stick with five at the back? And I think he absolutely will. I think if you're looking at this overall formation here, Manchester United, it's the solidity that you're going to get by having three at the back. It's the overall compactness you're going to have by having five at the back. Now, the, the, the good thing, I know that um, 3 5 2 gets slammed as a sort of massively defensive formation, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It depends how you play that formation. Manchester United can come out here and you can see Wambasaka really aggressively going for the width up there. You've got Shaw. I'm going to speak about Rashford, Greenwood, and Sancho. I've left all of them out of this starting 11, as you can see. Shaw and wan need to offer that overlapping space, and we know that's how this 3-5-2 works properly. But what worked really well against Spurs, I would probably argue, is this bloke here. Bruno Fernandes against Spurs really did his job properly. And this is 
Bruno is going to be the difference between Manchester United getting camped in our own half against City in this 3-5-2 or whether or not we're going to have a proper outlet because you're going to get Freddie McTominay back in there. You're probably going to get Freddie McTominay dropping a little bit deeper, probably around about there. I thought both of them played pretty well against Spurs. But of course, it was Spurs. Spurs have just sacked their manager. That was the last game of their manager. They were they were at an all-time low. They were, their ebb and their flow was just... There was none of it. Spurs were a very easy team to play against. And I need to see Scott McTominay and Fred do a similar job in midfield against Tottenham Hotspur. I'll speak about that next. But before I do, let's roll the adverts. Big shout out to One Football for supporting United People's TV. A bit like I'm... Um, bit unlike Manchester United Football Club really supporting us right now with the way they're playing. But One Football, you know by now that I'm genuinely a big fan of the One Football app. That's why I love doing these integrations. If you don't have the app downloaded, there's a link in the description. It's free to download all your one-stop shop. That's why it's called One Football. It's literally all your football in one place. Nicely named. Uh, all the latest Manchester United news, all the pre-match build-up ahead of this game against Spurs, all the match reaction that will come after it, all the latest season stats, about players, all the latest transfer news as and when that happens. It's all going to be covered on the One Football app. So I would encourage you to go and download it. There is a link in the description. It's free to download and it will help United People's TV if you go over there and support and show your love for One Football. And they deserve it. So as I said, link in the description. Go and follow it over there. But look, if, if, there, are, if there are questions about the defence, then geez, there's questions about midfield. And this is what I've been repeating in all of my predicted 11 shows this season, right? So back to the team against City. And as I said, I want to see, we've got to see McTominay and Fred put in an absolutely top level performance here against City. City are going to really, if, if you see Freddie McTominay, for example, coming forward a little bit too far and leaving a lot of space in behind here, this, this is where the likes of De Bruyne, the likes of Mares are all going to, they're going to find space. They're going to find movement. They're going to find passes between the lines. Fred and McTominay are going to have to do such a good job against City. But as we know, on Solskjaer, Solskjaer's beaten Pep, what, three times now? Beaten him using this formation before as well. And it's about hitting on the counter. And we know that. Now, this is where you can have a bit of a conversation and a bit of debate, really. Because I've got Cavani on the pitch there. You could potentially put Rashford there. You could put Greenwood there. Sancho, not really. In my opinion, I think it's going to be Edinson Cavani, right? I think Cavani should be starting this game. I want to explain exactly why. We saw Rashford come on against Atalanta instead of Cavani in that position. And the reason that he was playing there was because I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer expected Atalanta to play with a slightly higher line with those back three that they were using, leaving the space in behind for Paul Pogba in this position to go and find the balls over the top for Rashford. Pogba played poorly. Atalanta pressed him out of the game. And those balls over to the top never came to him. I don't expect United to play long ball against City. I don't want United to play long ball against City. That, for me, is why it's so crucial that Bruno Fernandes properly operates as this number eight. I don't want to see him going up here as a supporting striker. That's what he loves to do. Bruno's a very excitable player. I say he's like a puppy. Uh, constantly moving, constant energy, sometimes incessant in his pressing, and it's good when it works, but when it doesn't and he pulls the whole team out of position and all of a sudden you've got this huge gap, you'll find United have to kick it long. Just hoof it and a hope because there's nobody there in the middle. And that space is where Bruno needs to sit. Bruno needs to operate there. Really, I mean, we, we say this all along and I'm sure I'll do this uh, in my pre-match show and uh, the Legacy Arms before the City game. But Bruno's got to link those. And I think we saw against Spurs just how good these two are. Just how good. And at combined age of 70, but over a thousand career goals between them. The experience is phenomenal. What I want to see them, they might be a little bit wide on this formation here. I don't want to see that. I want to see Cavani and Ronaldo operating quite narrow. And that's going to be where Shaw comes on the overlaps. That's going to be where Wan-Bissaka comes on the overlaps. And we need to see Cavani and Ronaldo linking up together. I think probably looking at around about the 65th-ish minute or so, you'll see Cavani come off. You'll see Rashford come on. Now, where does this leave Jadon Sancho? What's your opinion on Jadon Sancho? The, the missing man, right? Signed him for 70 million, chased him for two years. He can't get a sniff in the team. And I think that's uh, partly because of the formation we've now switched to. But even before the formation was switched, he hardly played at all, did he? Hardly played at all. And I think it's been mismanagement. I think it's been a lot of things. 
Jadon Sancho can really feel hard done by, but I don't think he's going to start in this game against City because we've switched to the 3-5-2. I found it a bit odd, if I'm being completely honest, that as soon as Varane went off against Atalanta, we switched away from the 3-5-2. Um, I don't know. It, it, it kind of jarred me a little bit. Was that Does that mean that we were playing the 3-5-2 to give Varane more legs around him so we didn't have to move so much? Because if we were willing to just toss that out the window, considering we could have simply put Shaw as the third centre-back, third left centre-back, and put Tellez down there. We could have simply done that as a switch, bring bring Shaw out here, put there, and then bring Tellez on. If Manchester United could easily, easily have done that against Atalanta and kept the shape. Instead, we switched to a 4-2-3-1. Shaw held his position here. And then uh, we saw, who was it? Lindelof? No, Lindelof wasn't on. It was Bai and it was Maguire and it was Wan-Bissaka switched to a 4-2-3-1. Found it a bit odd how, was, how we changed that. But for me, I think this formation is crucial if we're going to have any real chance, honest chance of beating Man City. It does mean we're going to sit quite deep. It does mean we're going to sit on the counter. But as Roy Keane said after that game against Spurs, it's not necessarily the end of the world, all right? If you can do it and you can do it properly, you can sit and you can play as a football team be tight in your units, be tight in the lines that you've got there, make sure that there's not really too much space operating between here or between there or between there, making sure that all the three lines drop back together in shape at the same time and move forward together in shape at the same time. It seemed like the players knew how to do that more in the 3-5-2 than they do in the 4-2-3-1. Uh, take from that what you will. For me, the most crucial player absolutely is Bruno. If we don't have Bruno having a good game and we find him a little bit disconnected, we're going to find ourselves camped inside a back seven. And that's when the 3-5-2 becomes frustrating to watch for United fans, for any fans, really. He's got to make sure he links that. And City will leave space. Of course they will. But City are a fantastic team, a far better team than Manchester United. And if we're going to win, we're going to be coming from an underdog position. So in my opinion, that should be the team we use there. I think we should use by Maguire and Lindelof. I'm sure Lindelof will be fit to play with Fred and McTominay as the two midfielders. Of course, Pob is going to be banned and I don't think he should have started anyway, even if he was. Bruno there in the number 10, number 8 role and Ronaldo and Cavani up front. You could put Rashford or Greenwood or Sancho on. You could talk about Donny van der Beek after what was another impressive cameo from him against Atalanta. But you can let me know what you think about everything there in the comments. Do you think Manchester United have any chance against City? Do you think we'll stick to the 3-5-2? Do you think we'll switch to the 4-2-3-1? You let me know what you think about all of that in the comments below. Make sure, as always, you drop a like on the video, please, and subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But if this is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's last chance, then anything but three points against City simply isn't enough. And I don't think it's enough anyway. That's my own personal opinion. You let me know what you think.